Welcome, welcome. This is New Life in the City under the leadership of Pastor Isaac and Pastor Jaquila Smith. Today we're going to be discussing the new members class, Salvation. Salvation brings us to a place of fellowship with God where we are able to receive from God all that he has for us to bring us back to our original state. I have several definitions of salvation, deliverance from the power and effects of sin, deliberation, the act of getting someone free from ignorance, which ignorance is a lack of knowledge or information or illusion, illusion, something wrongly perceived, preservation, the act of preserving something from destruction or failure. Deliverance, salvation also means deliverance, the act of being rescued or set free from danger, harm, ruin, or difficulty. There are several terms or words that defines or can be used in the place of the word salvation. And we're going to go through a few of them with, along with scripture. One is some people say saved, I'm saved. And we get that from Romans 10, 9. And the scripture reads, if you only declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Born again is also another word that was used. And just to let you know, I'm using the Bible app because it's less cumbersome to um, bring out the scriptures. So just give me a minute while I go to the next scripture. And we are discussing born again, which I'm going to St. John. Three, one through three. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. At the dark, one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that Jesus sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Then Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. The third word they use is converted. Converted we can find in Matthew 18. Matthews 18, 1 through 4, converted. About the time the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a little child to him and put the child among them. Then he said, I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. So anyone who believes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. We thank God this morning, this afternoon for his word. The next one is justified, declared righteous. And that will be in Romans 5.1. And the scripture reads, therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us, that we are made right, declared right by Jesus, the name of God. The last one I'm going to discuss is new creation, and that will be in 2 Corinthians 
new creation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. This means that anyone who believes belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. I thank God today because of salvation. And this is a good time to start on your journey with salvation. The journey of salvation gives you a new life. The journey of salvation brings you into the kingdom of God. The journey of salvation brings you into God's presence. The journey of salvation has success and destiny for your life. Salvation, the journey, will have endless possibilities in while you are in the kingdom of God. In St. John 3, 16, 17, the words say, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This scripture gives us insight as to how much God loves us, and he will be willing to sacrifice how his Son to reconcile us back to himself. For God's word say there is no respect of persons in Romans 2.11. A person's race, ethnic group, background, color, gender, or position is not important to God. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's in Romans 10.13. To be born again when a man or woman confess with the mouth and believes in the heart, immediately they become, have the born again experience take place. Romans 10, 9 states that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I know a lot of times when we get saved, that don't mean we're not going to have attacks. That don't mean we're not going to have trouble. Don't think we're going to have a smooth spell selling because a lot of things, people, you be around people or you were around people, they're going to start looking at you. They're going to start checking you out. They might not want to hang with you no more. They might not want to call you anymore. But thank God. Thank God for salvation. Being born again is a spiritual birth. The person will receive a new spirit on the inside. Once repentance and acceptance of Jesus is made, the spiritual man lives on the inside of our heart and is known as the hidden man of the heart. That's in First Peter 3, 4. And let me turn to that. The word of God says in 1 Peter 3, 4, you should clothe yourselves instead with the beauty that comes from within, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of precious sight to God. He is also known, the spirit is also known as the inner man in Ephesians 3, 16. Ephesians 3, 16 through 17. I pray that this, that from his glorious unlimited resources, you will, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Thank God for his word. Thank God for Jesus Christ. I bless the Lord this day. When a person repents of their sins, God comes in and cleans them from all their sins and wrongdoings. God throws those sins into the sea of forgetfulness. This means that your past sins are forgiven and they start over with a new clean record. Another word that we discussed earlier is converted. Converted is another name used to describe salvation. The definitions of converted means 
to bring over to one belief, from one belief to another, view or party to another, to alter the physical or chemical nature of properties, to change from one form or function to another. I have a few examples of changing. You can be from a caterpillar. You know how a caterpillar turn into a butterfly. That's one exchange. Um, natural man. You're going to change from the physical, fleshly, to the spiritual. Another one is we once were slaves to sin. We once was bound in sin. But now we become kings and queens of God. The moment we repent, we are transformed from darkness into God's marvelous light. To be transformed is to change in composition or structure, to change in character or condition, to cause to undergo certain genetic transformations. This is the most important step decision you will make in your lifetime. You will have elected to change switch from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. There are benefits upon accepting Christ as your savior. The word of God tells us that at the cross, Jesus was wounded, that we would receive healing, punished, that we would be forgiven, made sin, that we would be made righteous, tasted death that we may have life. He was cursed that we may be blessed. In receiving salvation, there are other benefits as well that we are entitled to. We will discuss those areas in another lesson. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. We thank you for joining us. And now we will go into our second lesson why do we need salvation? The need for salvation is great. With the fall of Adam and Eve, God saw that there was a need, a desire to re repair our fellowship, our relationship back to him. When God created man, it was good. Genesis 1, 31, and God saw everything that he made. And behold, it was very good. When Adam and Eve chose to be disobedient as to what God has told them to do in Genesis 2, 16 through 17. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou should not eat of it. For in the day that thou shouldest eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. Man was no longer in fellowship or relationship with God. Man was in a fallen state, a spiritual death, and the covenant with God was broken. This is the consequences of disobedience. Yes, we are still in the flesh, but if we don't accept Christ as our Savior, we are spiritually dead. According to Genesis 6, 5, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. Therefore, throughout the years, there was a number of methods God used in hopes that man would change. The first method he used was Noah, Noah's ark where he had Noah building an ark to save the human race at that time because he felt if he saved a few that was obedient, that he can have a relationship with us again. But somehow or another, it didn't work out that way. But the scripture says, I'm going to Genesis 6. 14 through 16. Build a large boat from wood and waterproof it with tar, inside and out. 
then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior. So God designed the boat and told Noah how to build it and how to form it, how to shape it. In Genesis 18, 22, you know these phones or something else with this um bible app but the scripture is we talking about we discussing noah's ark genesis 6 18 through 22 but i will conform my covenant confirm my covenant with you so enter the boat, you and your wife and your sons and, your, and their wives. Bring a pair of every kind of animal, a male and female, into the boat with you to keep them alive during the flood. Pairs of every kind of bird, every kind of animal, and every kind of small animal that scurries around the ground will come to you to be kept alive. And be sure to take on board enough food for their family and for all the animals. So God made preparation for man and building the ark. And Genesis 7, 1 says, when everything was ready, the Lord said to Noah, go into the boat with all your family for among all the people of the earth, I can see that you alone are righteous. So God created this and started it to include noah and his family that once everything is settled the flood was over that he can use noah to rebuild and replenish the earth but unfortunately the sin nature in man is in our heart and the only way we can overcome it is accepting jesus christ into our life and becoming a new creature the second was sacrifice and offerings. The third method he used was the Ten Commandments. And the final solution that he used was Jesus Christ. The three problems with the, the first three solutions is that they dealt with the flesh and therefore it was no change with man. With the even with the offerings, the sin offerings, you sin, you do something, you may uh, commit adultery, you may get drunk, you may covet your neighbor's belongings, and then you go and you kill a goat or you kill some chickens, but those things would not take the place of wiping away our sins. It did not change our heart or our spirit. Mark seven twenty one twenty three. reads for from within out of the heart of man perceive evil thoughts adulteries fornications murders thefts covetousness wickedness deceit lasciviousness and even i blasphemy pride foolishness all these evil things come from within and defile a man so whatever offerings that we were able to to do it didn't change us having the ten commandments saying thou shall not kill thou shall not steal even though that was a law it didn't change man the final solution is after god saw that man's heart was full of evil he orchestrated the plan of salvation to bring man back into the fellowship with him through the blood of his son jesus christ thank you this is the conclusion of the first half of the new members class on salvation and why we need salvation. The next lessons will be on Jesus, the Son of God, and the benefits of salvation. Thank you. Thank you for joining us again. This is part three of the new members class. Part three, the final solution, who is Jesus?
The word of God tells us in St. John 3, 16, 17, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Thank you again for joining. God, the son, the second person of the Trinity became man. He took on a physical body. He experienced life as we know it to show man the path back to God. God as man had legal rights entered the earth to restore man back to his kingdom. God had given man dominion over the earth, but they lost it, forfeited it through the sin of Adam and Eve. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. That's in St. John 1.1. 1, 1. St. John 1.14, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten son of the father, full of grace and truth. There are various names that Jesus, we can know Jesus as. I will highlight a few. He's known as the Word. He's known as the Son of Man. He's known as the Son of God. And Luke 1, 35, the Word of God tells us, the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost will come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overtake thee, Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. We also have Emmanuel, and that's in Isaiah 7, 14, and that also means God is with us. And let me just read Isaiah 7, 14. And I know y'all are new members, but hopefully you have a good study Bible and a concordance to go by, or you can use the Bible app that has various translations and versions of the Bible. Isaiah 7, 14 states, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And that with that being said, that was Jesus. But in this verse, they say Emmanuel, which means God is with us. There's also another verse in Luke, Luke 2, 11, that states, that shows also a sign. Sometimes people like to see a sign. They don't want to believe unless you show them something. Okay, so Luke 2, 11 and 12. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothing, laying in a manger. That's two different chapters. One was in the Old Testament and one in the New Testament that God was sending a sign that he was with us. Jesus came as a lamb of God, the blood that was shed that would take away the sin of the world and reconcile us back to God to destroy the power of the enemy over us. As stated in the previous lesson, God had used three other methods that would not work. He brought salvation by his own hand, by the blood of his son, Jesus. 
the Holy One. He needed somebody holy, pure, the blood of Jesus that washes us, cleanses us, and sanctifies us. The blood of Jesus that never loses power. Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. He came to take the keys of hell, to take away the sting of death. He came to give us power to become the sons of God. There are a few other names that he goes by. Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. But whichever name you go by, you can always say Jesus. It's only by God's grace that we are saved through faith, not of ourselves, not by any works. It is the gift of God. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. He will resurrect your dreams, resurrect your health, resurrect relationships. He has split the veil, rent the veil, that we may have access to God. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. I bless the Lord for having to be able to call upon the name of the Lord through the name of Jesus. The step that you have taken to join New Life in the City Church and also to take this new members class is commendable. But I also advise you and let you know that this is an individual road. It's an individual journey. Each person has to accept Christ for their self. With that being said, some relatives, some friends may not want to hang with you anymore because you want to know the word. They may not want to do the things you want to do. You may want to come to church. You want to may participate in Bible study and prayer on Saturday mornings, but they want to go out to the club. Or they want to go, you know, somewhere that you don't feel comfortable with going. It's individual um, choice because it's either you're going to have a religion or you're going to have a relationship. And that's what's going to keep you, the relationship that you have with the word of God, with Jesus, the Father. You'll be translating from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. This concludes part three of who Jesus is, the final solution. Now we'll go into the benefits of salvation. The benefits of salvation are great and many. I have a few to give you tonight or today, but it is extremely important that you maintain and you seek the words out for yourself. Some of the benefits that we receive are healing. Everyone is familiar with Psalms 23. The Lord is our shepherd. It states that he leads us, he guides us in the way that we should go. In Psalms 1-3, he restores my soul, healing. Jeremiah 30, 17, for I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. These are familiar scriptures, and now that we have access to God, we can go to God at any time in prayer. We don't have to wait for the priest. We don't have to wait for the pastor. We could just go in Jesus' name. The second one I have is safety, Psalms 23 and 4. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil. That's protection, going or experiencing danger, difficulty, or even death of a loved one. He protects us, safety. Psalms 3, 5, and 7 says,
I lay me down and sleep. I awoken for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of 10,000 of people that have set themselves against me round about me. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. That was Psalms 3, 5 through 7. The next one is deliverance. Psalms 34, 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Colossians 1, 13. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? God is good. God is good. There's a lot of things in the word that we are not familiar with until we start studying. It's a lot of times people may join a church and then they just listen to the pastor. They just carry the Bible on a Sunday, but they don't actually know the word. And as I read in the beginning, that the word is God and the, God, and the word was God. So in order to get close to God, to be in his presence and to know him, we have to read the word for ourselves. Other people can tell you what it says, but the Holy Spirit in you need the word for you to feel for you to feed him and then he'll give it back to you when it's time the holy spirit will bring back his words to your remembrance when you need to speak to somebody when you're trying to be tactful when you don't want to get out of line when you don't want to get rude or mad upset when you don't want to go to profanity Ask the Holy Spirit, then he'll bring the words back to your remembrance. The fourth benefit is soundness, and that's in Acts 3, 16. and his name through faith, and in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. That's preservation, the soundness. Also, I have Second Timothy 1 and 7, Second Timothy one and seven. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Only through Christ that we have a sound mind. Only through the word we have a sound mind. Once you start familiarizing yourself with the word and standing on the word, you will know the difference. A lot of problems or situations that we go through. The word also says that it, it, um, um, I can't think of the name. It can't, it, um, it gives us discretion that we know what to do in different situations. It's because that word, it'll restrain us. It'll keep us focused. Being a Christian, you can say anything you want to say, but you also want to, Remember that we are representing Christ. The fifth benefit is preservation. Psalm 16 and 1. Preserve me, O Lord, for in thee do I put my trust. And also in Psalms 16 and 5 states, Psalm 16 and 5, the Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. Thank God for that. Wholeness, Ephesians 3, 19. And I know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all fullness of God. And that is, so when we get saved, once we confess Christ in our life, God immediately awards us these benefits. 
which is healing, safety, deliverance, soundness, preservation, and wholeness. Also, we have the word of God. The word of God keeps us. The word of God instructs us. We have the Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us. The Holy Spirit ministers to us. God has given his angels to protect us. God said that he will fight our battles if we just be still and know him. In Proverbs 25 and 2, the word of God says, It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to stretch, to search it out a matter. And what that means is, you as a king or queen, you could search out God. You could search out the matter that you're going through. Find the scriptures based on what you're going through. One of the things that enlighten me or encourages me is to know that God has made provisions for us. But the thing about it is a lot of times people will try and do what their friends are doing. This is an individual thing. We was born into this world by ourselves, and we're gonna die by ourselves. And with that being said, I'm saying you were born, you know, from your mom by yourself. Even if you was a twin, or a triplet, you still is an individual. And when you pass, God is you gonna be before God. So everything you do, everything you say, it's gonna go through him. So with this being said, as far as to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search it out, to search out what's going on. I know people may say, oh, well, you know, this just a mem member of the church and, you know, we shouldn't listen to her, but listen to the word of God. If you read the word, if you study the word, whatever the minister say, whatever members say, the Holy Spirit will bring it back to your remembrance. The Holy Spirit will bring back what you have read, what you have put in. But the thing is, we have to do it as individuals. God has made the provisions. God said he'll fight our battles. He'll be there. You know, he's not a man that he shall lie. He said no weapon formed against us will prosper. He said everything that the enemy meant for evil, that he was turning around for our good. We are under the protection and the umbrella of God. And I thank God for that. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. We're here to be a light to shine for others. And I bless the Lord for that. In conclusion, this is the end of the new members class. Following this, there will be a short quiz to review what you have learned. Thank you for your participation in this class. If you have any questions, please contact any of the leaders and they will guide you in the right direction. Thank you.